Hi everyone. Today we're going to be learning about adding and subtracting radicals, which is quite an easy section, especially if you did your 6-3 homework where you learned how to simplify radicals. So other than that, there's not really anything new to learn, but we will practice. So remember when we learned addition and subtraction with variables, you can only add like terms. Well, when you're adding and subtracting radicals, you can only add like radicals. So here's the definition of like radicals. I'm going to turn the paper just a little bit so I can write on it. So like radicals must have the same index and the same radicand. Remember, index is the number in the radical, radicand is what's underneath. So when we look at this example, we go, yep, they both have the same index, 4. They both have the same radicand, 5. So just like with x's, if we had 3x plus 4x, we'd get 7x. So 3, 4 through 5 plus 4, 4 through 5 is 7, 4 through 5. So anytime I kind of get mixed up on the um, rules to follow, I just put an x in there and I go, what would I do if that was 3x plus 4x? Oh, I would add the coefficients and then just keep it x. Well, same rule apply for radical. As long as they're the same, add the coefficients, keep the radical. Just like we add the coefficients, we kept the x. So we're going to start off real nice and easy. So on A, are these like terms? Absolutely. They're both a square root. They both have a radicand of 6, just like an x. There's an imaginary one in front, and I would put that in because a lot of students, just like with x's, think it's 0 rad 6, but it's 1. So 1 rad 6 plus 2 rad 6 is 3 rad 6. Super simple, just like x is. 1x plus 2x is 3x. For b, 5 cube root 3 minus 6 cube root 3, they have the same index, they have the same radicand, therefore we can subtract 5 minus 6 is negative 1, but remember generally we don't write the 1, so you could on the first step, negative 1 cube root 3, and then when you go to write your final answer, just write negative cube root 3. So just like x's, we generally don't put that one out in front. It kind of looks grade schoolish, and we're grown-ups. So I think I have it programmed into Connect, though, not to count it wrong. So, you know, you're just learning. So if you put the 1 in, I don't believe it's going to count it wrong. Okay, so now, how about these? Are they like terms? Square root, square root, yep. Radicands 2, radicands 2. So we add the front numbers. So when we add the front numbers, we get 5 fifths. Remember, the rule for adding fractions is add the numerators keep the denominator the same. So 5 fifths radical 2, but 5 fifths is really 1, right? So 1 radical 2, which is just radical 2. Woohoo! Nice and simple. Okay, so does everybody agree? Three like terms here. Square root 3, square root 3, square root 3. So we're really just doing 4 minus 2 minus 8, and then adding a square root 3 onto it. So we add or subtract all the coefficients. So 4 minus 2 is 2, minus 8 would be negative 6 radical 3. And what happens if some of them are the same and some of them aren't? Well, if those two were x's and that's a y, you'd combine the two x's, right? Well, we do the same thing. So since these are the same, we combine them and we would get 10 radical 5 minus 2 radical 2. And we just write that as our answer. So if there's not a like term to go with something, you just leave it right there. 
Okay, in order, doesn't matter. Whatever order the problem's in, I usually just keep it that way. So now look at the next one we have. 4 through 7, 4 through 7, 4 through 7. So we have three like terms there, right? So now go down the line and look at the coefficients. 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 plus 30 would be 35. 4 through 7 minus 2. So 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 plus 30 is 35. Tack on the radical, minus 2. Question of the day. Can we write that as 33 fourth root 7? So this is what you should ask yourself. If that was an x, could I write that as 33x? Absolutely not. They're not like terms. So for the same reason, do not make that 33. This goes together. This is like the variable part of that term. This one doesn't have it. So you can't combine them. They're not like terms. So this would be your answer. Very common thing I see students do incorrectly on the test is they want to go that extra step and make that 33. But if they're not like terms, we can't combine them. So just leave it. Okay, well, you can probably guess that the problems aren't always going to be this easy. They're not always going to be simplified. They're not always going to be the same. So what do we do when they're not the same? So here's a great example to show you. So first, you want to break everything down. So this is 7 x's. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 under a fourth root. So remember how we learned uh, before break to circle groups of four. So one, two, three, four. And four x's come out as a single x, right? And then we have three underneath, but that's not enough to get out of jail. So those just are going to stay. So that term's going to turn into 11. Bring the x out. And fourth root of, there's one, two, three x's inside, x cubed. This one is already simplified. And how we know it's simplified is the exponent is smaller than the index. When the exponent is larger than the index, that tells you it needs to be simplified. But this, there's only three x's. That's not enough to get out of jail. So we write the first term in its new form, 11x fourth root, and then there's three x's underneath, minus three x, fourth root x cubed. Now we have to look and see, are they like terms? So are the terms out in front alike? Yes, they're both x. Are the radicals alike? Fourth root, fourth root, yep. x cubed, x cubed, yep. So subtract your coefficients. 11x minus three x is eight x, and then tack on the radical, fourth root of x cubed. So that's not so bad, right? That's why I said if you've done 6, 3 and learned how to simplify radicals, this is what you're doing for this whole problem. So should we try some? Let's go ahead and go over to the next page. So... Before the video, I went through to look and see which ones looked like test questions. So I already have them marked, so you can go ahead and mark them. So we're now on page 14, the very last page of the packet we were working on before break. So 6.4, page 14. So there's three on your test. So those are the three that I could find that were closest to those. So as you look down the line, none of these have matching radicals. So I don't just walk away and go, oh, can't do them. They're not the same. What I have to do is use the methods from 6.3, what we learned before break, or actually what you learned in the first day of the notes, to break these radicals down. So let's go ahead and start. 
so five cube root and does everybody know that means five times and eight is two times four which means two times two times two right so eight is three twos so then we're going to do three twos one two three and then an x and we'll circle the perfects in a second let's go ahead and get it broke down first so five so plus five cube root 125 is five times 25 which is five times five times five right so this is three fives and an x so like i said we're just using all the methods you learned on 6.3 in the first set of videos for the first day and we're doing the same thing just breaking down two problems in one instead of just one so we learned in 6.3 this tells me we're looking for pairs of three so there's three twos so that's going to pop out as a single two and remember that is times Here's three fives, so that's going to pop out as a single five. And again, don't forget that's times. So this is really five times two cube root, and what's left under the radical? Just an x. Plus five times, so this is the five there. These three fives come out as a single five cube root x so that's the problem simplified we took the triples out because we learned in 6.3 this tells me how many to circle so three twos is a single two three fives is a single five they come out and get multiplied by the numbers in front so now this is 10 cube root x plus 25 cube root x and once I get them both simplified, then I look and say, hmm, are they like terms? Yes, they are. Cube root, cube root, x underneath. So I add the coefficients. 10 plus 25 is 35. And then I just tack on the radical part. So that would be 35 cube root x so see those aren't so bad especially if you practiced your 6-3 homework They're pretty easy okay let's do one more together and then you guys can try one how about that okay let's look at b b is very similar to a test question so two does it have any pairs no a does it have any pairs no nope. so that's going to stay the same one thing you might want to do that's kind of helpful is put a one in front remember how i said everything without a coefficient has an imaginary one because you're going to be adding like terms and i know one of the ones on the test has a one in front too so when you're adding like terms you kind of want to know that's there okay and then we have minus four and now we have to break down 72. So let's come over here to the side, maybe up here, and let's do a tree for 72. So 72 is 2 and 36. I always like one of the numbers to be prime so that I can circle it. And then this would be 2 and 18. And remember, if you picked other numbers, 8 and 9 or 4 and 9, we all get the same answer at the end. I just like circling one every time, so I keep using 2 until I can't anymore. 18 is 2 and 9. There's another prime. 9 is 3 and 3. So there we go. It's three twos and two threes. And remember, every single time you get a prime, circle it. Because sometimes you're going to have so many numbers there, it's going to be hard to keep track of it. So we have a two, a two, a two, a three, a three, and then we have an eight. 